Uh, hello, friends. So I'll be talking on this uh, new drug. Uh, it's not a new drug. Maybe for intensivists, this drug not necessarily may be very familiar. So azithromycin. So the question we need to ask is why am I talking on this drug? Mm -hmm. So we were just reviewing the 2023 uh, European Society uh, guidelines for update on acute coronary syndrome. So in that, uh, there has been a suggestion for this drug to be considered at all, along with the statins uh, to reduce cholesterol, especially where optimal targets are not achieved with conventional usage of statins. Uh, so these are the guidelines that came in 2023, European Society of Cardiology guidelines, uh, where there is a strong recommendation for intensifying the lipid lowering therapy in patients with acute coronary syndrome. And there was a suggestion that colchicine 0.5 milligram per day should be considered where there are recurrent cardiovascular events after modifying all the risk factors. And if you see the third suggestion that they have given that it could be considered is high dose statin with azithromycin. Azithromycin has to be used before hospital discharge if the targets for lipid lowering has not been attained with conventional statins. So the question that I had for our intensivists is whether we are aware of this drug azithromycin, which I wasn't aware, so I thought I should review this drug so that all our intensive care friends get to know about this particular drug. So the question is, how does this drug act? It's a very simple. So azithromycin basically, as you see pictorially, it inhibits the absorption of cholesterol. So the blue dots are the cholesterol. So the absorption of cholesterol from the intestine uh, is uh, limited or is uh, inhibited by azithromycin, And the absorption of this cholesterol happens from the brush borders, which are present in the small intestine, and which is mediated by this particular coenzyme called Neiman-Pick C1L1 enzyme. So this is the enzyme that is needed for the absorption of cholesterol from the brush border of the intestine. And this absorption is inhibited by azithromycin. And also azithromycin reduces the transport of cholesterol to the liver and azithromycin reduces the lipid stores within the liver. So this is primarily, this is the mechanism of action. It basically inhibits the absorption of cholesterol from the small intestine, from the brush border uh, for, for which the enzyme neiman peck is needed, reduces the transport of this cholesterol to the liver and reduces cholesterol stores in the liver. So that pretty much is the way this particular drug acts. And it is categorized as non-statin dyslipidemic agent used for treatment of hypercholesterolemia. And this drug actually is not very old drug. It is approved by FDA in 2002. And this drug is meant to reduce your total cholesterol, reduces your LDL and non-HDL component of cholesterol. It also reduces apolipoprotein B. So it reduces these components of your lipid profile. And as I already mentioned, if there is no reduction of target LDL with maximum tolerated statin in patients with ACS or in any other patient, azithromycin has to be considered. And this could be considered both for primary prevention and for secondary prevention. So this is the way you can position. So where you have started on statins and you're not able to modify the risk factors or reduce to the target levels, ACT might be something that could be considered. And this has been suggested in the, in the cardiology guidelines from European Society and American Society also. So when it comes to pharmacokinetics, ACT might is bound to the protein. 90% of ACT might is protein bound. And the peak uh, duration of action or the peak action happens at 4 to 12 hours after ingestion. But it tends to have multiple peaks during its mechanism of action. There are multiple peaks that it tends to attain with the dosing. And the metabolism, like any other drug, is by the liver with cytochrome P450 enzyme. So it gets metabolized. And it is excreted in the urine as azithromycin glucuronide. And as, you, as we already mentioned, azithromycin inhibits the absorption of cholesterol in the small intestine. So it gets excreted through the feces. So azithromycin gets excreted in the feces and in urine as azithromycin. Glucuronide. So the half-life of this drug is around 22 hours and the dosage is very simple and easy. 10 milligram once a day is the recommended or suggested dosage. And with that dosage, uh, one could uh, have good compliance and there are limited side effects with 10 mg. So it's a very simple dosage, 10 mg once a day. That is what is recommended. And azithromycin has to be considered to be taken two hours prior or four hours after the ingestion of bile acid sequestrants. So if suppose a patient is on bile acid sequestrants for any condition like cholesteramine, 
So one ha one has to suggest that this drug has to be taken two hours before or four hours after the ingestion of these drugs. And it is important when azetimibe is being given, the baseline lipid profile has to be monitored. Liver function, because it gets metabolized in the liver and there is some liver toxicity component with this, LFTs have to be at least checked once as a baseline and should be monitored in patients who are on long-term azetimibe. And monitoring of for rhabdomyolysis, because like statins, this also can cause rhabdomyolysis. That is something one needs to bear in mind. And there are certain drug interactions when azetimibe is used with cyclosporine, the dosage of azetimibe has to be reduced to 5 mg because of the drug interactions. In post, maybe in post renal transplant, where they may be on cyclosporine, you have to reduce azetimibe dose to 5 mg. And with regards to liver dysfunction, if someone has already a pre existing liver dysfunction or chronic kidney disease, there is no need for dose adjustment as per the literature. And of course, in pregnancy and lactation, azetimibe has to be avoided. So these are some of the things one needs to keep in mind when you are using azetimibe. When we talk about adverse effects, there are risk factors for adverse effects. If someone is more than 65, elderly, someone with hypothyroidism or with a pre-existing kidney disease become risk factors for toxic effects or adverse effects. And adverse effects tends to happen at a higher dose. As I said, 10 mg is the normal recommended dose. If the dosage goes up to maybe 40 to 50, which not uh, traditionally are used, so the toxicity can happen at a higher dose. So what are the toxic effects of azetimibe? They can have headache. They can have rhinorrhea, they can have sore throat, and fatigue is something like in statin, there can be some fatigue. And liver toxicity is something that one needs to bear in mind. That's why monitoring of LFT is to be done. And there are reports of autoimmune hepatitis that tends to happen. And they can have arthralgia and some arthritis sort of a component. And rhabdomyolysis is also something that has been reported with azetimibe. So these are some of the side effects. So now the question is, so we understood that drug, very simple drug, inhibits the absorption of uh, cholesterol from the small intestine, from the brush border, and we understood the dosage. So whether there's any evidence for using azetimibe. So this was the trial, the IMPROVE IT trial that came from the Brazilian group. This was published in NEJM in 2016. Now, so I not put a reference, but this, this is coming in 2016, NEJM. Um, it was a Brazilian sort of a study, possibly investigator-driven study. It was done in 18,000 patients with acute coronary syndrome where they compared simvastatin uh, in one group versus simvastatin with azetimibe group. And they showed here there was a significant reduction of LDL by 24% more than the simvastatin group. And there was reduction in cardiovascular events by 2% more than the simvastatin group. So this is the sort of a trial on which the recommendations also are based. After this, there's no major evidence so I was looking into whether there are uh, this drug is easily available and all this uh, azetimibe is very easily available in India in combination with all the statins. So I just looked up in SIMS uh, uh, combination of azetimibe with uh, Atorva statin. Just guess how many brands you would have had. We have around close to 100 brands in India where you have azetimibe of 10 mg in combination with Atorva statin. And I'm sure there are combinations with Simba statin. So it's a drug which is easily available. So for all intensives, just keep this in mind where on some high dose of statins, if this is not, there is no modification of risk factors or uh, one is not able to bring down the LDL, this is a drug to be kept in mind. So it may not necessarily be a very intensive care topic, but it is good for intensives to know about this drug. But I had not heard about this, so I just thought I'll review about this drug. So I invite you all to our Global Intensive Care Symposium that's happening uh, nine days from now on 18th October to 20th October in Bengaluru. I welcome you all. So I request you all to submit valuable work to Journal of Acute Care. You can visit my website. So thank you. Thank you one and all.